Welcome back, physics fans, and here on our, one of our last lessons of electrostatics, grade 12 physics, and we're going to talk about plates and capacitors and stuff like that. Here we go. So uh, one of the things that we've, if you haven't noticed in uh, electrostatics so far, we've had a, a point charge, and the issue or a, a, an idea here from point charge is we have an E field that's generated radially away. Now, when we radially go away from it, the E field is changing as it goes away. The E field strength is going down as you go further away. Okay? In physics 11, when we're talking about a G field, when we're near the surface of the Earth, G was always 9.8. It was a constant. And because it was a constant, we could do a lot of cool stuff with it. In other words, we could use F equals MA... And if G was a constant, because this equals mg, the gravitational force, if G was a constant, then acceleration is a constant. And then the force pulling the object down to the Earth was a constant force. And when we had that, then we could use formulas like Vf squared equals Vi squared plus 2ad, because this is kinematics of constant acceleration. So we could start doing a lot of physics with it if we had a constant E field. But around a point charge, there is not going to be a constant E field. So we can you kind of use F equals MA, but we have to relate it to energy quickly and graph it because acceleration is changing. So that's why we ended up with the electrostatic potential energy is KQ. Q over R because the force changed and we had to graph it to get this formula. But again, if force stayed the same, life would be grand. Well, how could we get the force the same? Well, if we have a, a whole bunch of positive charges here, all on this plate, on this bar, on this rod, whatever you want, and a whole bunch of negative charges down below, then the E field would be uniform, at least in between the plates, in between these bars, because just the way it is, it would be, and if they were really close together and really long, so instead of this little drawing here, I have a, a plate here and another plate here, definitely in the middle here, the E field would be uniform. And when we have a uniform E field, then the electrostatic force is uh, QE, and that's like mg for gravity, right? That's the, And this is constant now, and if this is constant, then this force is constant. And when we have a constant E field, and of course, this charge that stays constant, then we get a constant force, and then becomes the physics 11 kinematics in here. Again, where we can actually calculate what the acceleration is throughout that region, not just at that instant. Okay, because then this could be equal to MA. Okay, good physics that happens in there. And it so happens that if we, to get this, all we have to do, hook it up to is to a a positive cell and we end up with parallel plates with charges on it and this is very similar to capacitance and stuff like that and we create these E fields all the time tons of these things in your phones and your electronics and stuff like that it's another circuit item rather than resistances and light bulbs there's capacitors so what's unique about it is E is the same E is constant throughout it. So what happens in parallel plates, there is a constant ratio of the voltage drop over the distance. Because the E field is constant, then the potential, the, the potential across it is constantly changing. Okay? And it depends on the, the distance between the plates. And this ratio is the electric field. So 
what they're trying to hint at is our formula that's going to come up here is that E is equal to V, the voltage over the separation distance. And it's universe, it's uniform between it. And the electric field is given by the voltage difference over the plate separation. So the E field, I'll just write it down better here. I just, it's too high. I'll have to change that in my notes. E is equal to the voltage over D. And now it's not just the voltage, it's the change in voltage. Voltage is the di uh, potential difference between them. Okay, this gives us, interesting, that a volt per meter is equivalent to a, a newton per coulomb in units-wise. And that's important. So it's kind of like giving uh, G is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. That's essentially wrong, right? G is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, but this set of units is kind of equivalent to that because a newton is a kilogram meters per second squared. Well, the same thing here, a newton per coulomb and volt per meter. So if I have two sets of plates, uh, that are separated by three centimeters. We're doing example number eight now. Let's just zoom on into that and work on this one. Okay, let's just practice doing this. So if we have a, a plate over here that is at zero volts, and we have a plate over here that is at positive 225 volts, and we have an electron inside that plate, and these plates are separated by three centimeters. Find the E field and direction that that electron will feel. Well, first of all, if an electron is negative, it's going to be attracted to the higher voltage one, and not negative voltage, but a positive voltage. So the direction is going to be, in this picture, to the right, or towards the positive 225. And the E field that it the electric field that it will feel is equal to the volt over the distance. So this is going to be 225 volt difference between the plates all over a distance of 0 0.03 meters. And this is going to be 7,500 volts per meter. And that one would be to the right. Okay? And this, that you might not see it, but this is exciting. Because this is constant. And if that's constant, then it's kind of like, you don't have to continue on here, although you could jot this down. This is equivalent to 7,500 newtons per coulomb. To the right. We know it's charged, the electron, so we know what constant force this electron experiences between the plates. Okay? Because this is going to equal uh, 0.03. This is the E field. So going, we'll have. The electrostatic force is the net force. And then you'll have QE is equal to MA. You'll know the charge of the electron, the mass of the electron, and now you know that that's constant. Now we can do kinematics. We can calculate the acceleration. I can ask you what speed does that electron hit the other plate with? How much time does it take to get to the other plate? We can bring kinematics into this again, at least the kinematics we can do. Constant acceleration kinematics. So this is extremely exciting. And that's kind of about what this chapter is all about. 
Now, understanding now a little bit more about charge separation and plates in uniform E fields, let's just step aside before we do more calculations in physics. Okay, example nine. Explain why an atom will be ionized, the electron will be separated from it, if it's placed in a sufficiently large enough electric field. Okay, You're, you think I'm going blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm never going to experience this. Just pay attention here, though. If we're talking about air, which is a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen and other trace gases, it takes about 3 million volts per meter to ionize it. This may seem like a lot, but it's not. We happen to hit this every day. Okay? We hear the crackling of our clothes being pulled out of the dryer because of electrostatics. You drag your feet along the floor and you get a little zap. We've just in, include, we've just made an E field that is three million volts per meter. Okay, just by doing that, you charge up a balloon, and if somehow you can get it to zap and make a little shock, you've done that. Okay, you've created it, and each of these little things, and at least in the air here creates a little bit of light. You get to see that little spark, okay? And the ionized electron does not remain free. It wants to fall back to a neighboring atom, and that's what happens. It releases that energy, light energy. Example number two, 10. The bottom of a cloud is charged by 2.5 times 10 to the 8 volts. How close does that cloud need to be to the ground for a lightning bolt to occur. Now you've got to remember, the air breaks down at 3 million volts per meter. We're talking about lightning bolts here. Now we're just going to just quickly apply it. Okay, not magic here. Okay, there's clouds, and let's just zoom in here, and let's go to 300%. We're, we're standing here on the ground, and we have, I don't know, we have a tree, and we have our house, and stuff like that, and we have storm clouds above, and they've been electrically charged and have a voltage compared to the ground of 2.5 times 10 to the 8 volts. So what is that charge separation? Well, remember, the air breaks down at 3 million volts per meter. So that is E is equal to 3 times 10 to the uh, 6th, is it? Volts per meter. All right, so that's going to be uh, volts per meter. So that's the E field. At that point, electrons start being ionized, meaning lightning bolt. So we now have our E field, and we have how, how much this is charged, 2.5 times 10 to the 8. So we use this formula that we have, the only one so far in this chapter, which is, I mean, this lesson, is E equals V over D. So the charge separation is D is equal to volts over E. And when we plug this in, we get uh, 2.5 times 10 to the 8 all over 3 million. We get about 83.3 meters. So, if the clouds are 100 meters up, you're pretty safe. Or at least the edge of the clouds are where the electrical is stored. But if it's 83 meters, 83.3 meters, zap. Where do you not want to be during a lightning storm? Standing on the top of your house. Why? 
because if this distance is 83, it's going to go to your house. Stand on it, you now only need to be 81 meters because you're two meters tall. You create part of that distance. So you don't want to be outside. <clears throat> you don't want to be near things that are tall. You don't want to be near a tree. I sh and man, my plan was to bring that selfie. There's these uh, bicyclists that stopped during this electrical storm and ran underneath a tree. They still have their helmets on, and they go, oh, well, let's take a selfie. And the moment they click the button to selfie, the lightning hit the tree. It was an absolutely wonderful picture. You could tell that there's two people there, but everything else is lit up in white and orange. The whole tree is white and orange. And they, of course, they lived, because you got to see their phone and everything like that, and I don't know how their phone survived, but the picture was fabulous. I'll see if I can pull that out again. So you don't want to be <clears throat> bringing the cloud closer to the ground. So you don't want to be in a sailboat. Now, if you happen to be in a sailboat, you don't want to be touching anything metal. You don't want to be part of that. And most sailboats have a big, thick wire going from the top of the mast down to the keel. That goes right through the boat, right down to the water level just so that when they do get struck by lightning, the current, and they do, they get hit by lightning a lot, you get the current going straight through the boat and not to any of the items in the boat, like people. Okay. Let's come back to some uh, physics calculations here that we could enjoy. Says Mr. Curl. So find the acceleration of an electron placed in between the metal plates that are separated by 2.5 centimeters and are charged to 275 volts. Why is this electron so unhappy? Yeah, because he's negatively charged. Sorry. So F is equal to QE. Vector, vector. And here, we can get E is equal to the change in voltage over the distance. That's what's happening today. So it's uh, 275 volts separated by 0.025 meters, meters. So we get an E field of I believe this is 11,000. Now I could call it volts per meter as I put it in here. Okay, but it's also 11,000. Whoops, 11,000 newtons per coulomb. Okay, see if you got this. Here we go. That the net force. The net electrostatic force is the net force. So MA is equal to QE. And if we hadn't calculated the E, if we hadn't, we could have said MA is equal to Q, V, the voltage over the distance, separating the plates. Now remember, that's the distance separating the plates. One more time. That's the distance separating the plates. You go, yeah, 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 stop doing that. That's not the distance the electron moves. It is if, it, if the electron goes from plate to plate. But the electron doesn't have to go plate to plate. So when we bring this to kinematics, we got to understand we'll end up with another D. <laughs> D equals 1 half AT squared or something like that. So... Let's continue on here. The acceleration here is going to equal QE. That's the electrostatic force divided by the mass. Now remember, with in physics 11, mg equals ma, the mass is cancelled because each side had a mass in it. So A is equal to G. It was really simple. Here, it doesn't. 
we actually get the, the charge per mass ratio of the, of the object. The electron's charge divided by the electron's mass. Okay? If we start plugging numbers in here, we get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. The E field was 11,000. And the mass here was 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31st kilograms. And if you get that, the acceleration is constantly between the plates, this very small number of 1.9 times 10 to the 15th <laughs> meter per second squared. Okay, and if you needed in this diagram, this would be up its x direction. And the last one we'll do on the video here is we'll be talking about a very famous experiment called the Millikan oil drop experiment. This gent, Millikan, used parallel plates to hold a charged object in place, levitated it. The oil drop remained in place because of an electric force that was pulling up balance the gravitational force pulling down on it. So we, we had the electric force up balancing the force of gravity down. Okay, how he did it, he kind of misted oil drops. So they're really tiny. In fact, you couldn't see the oil drops are that small. So he had to have like a microscope, but a horizontal microscope, not a vertical one. So he was looking into it, and as all these drops are all misted like that, he put an E field in here, and some drops went up, and some drops went down. They'd go down because of gravity, and up because the E field was too strong, but some stayed in place. And the ones that stayed in place, as he balanced, as he tuned the E field, he changed the E field strength, he found that some stayed in place. And by doing that, he was able to determine the charge on it. Okay, let's do that calculation here. That the upward force has to balance the downward force. So the electrostatic force, QE, had to balance MG All right, so here we go. An oil drop is at rest due to balancing these forces. A particle, this oil drop has a mass of 2.3 times 10 to the negative 14th. How did he get that? He had to measure its radius, you know, the density of the oil, so you can get its mass pretty quick. We're not going to bring in that. That just adds a little bit more complexity to it. So I, we're just giving you the mass of this oil drop. And a charge of negative 3 is held, and that will, su that will uh, suspend the plates. I mean, su suspend the drop so between the plates. So in this, in this example, number 13, we're giving you the charge. Okay. So I'm going to just play with the formulas here a little bit, just so you can see it. Q, the change in voltage over the distance is our E. And that equals our mg. We're going to solve for the q here. We'll solve for the q just briefly because you'll often use it to solve for q, but this, this question doesn't ask us to solve for it. But I'll just solve for it just so you see it. q is equal to mgd all over the change in voltage. Okay, so what he did was adjust the voltage. He knew the separation between the plates. He knew the mass. 
of course he knows 9.8, he was able to determine the charges on this object. And he was determining really small charges. And he determined that he could get charges of uh, 6.4 times 10 to the negative 19th. He could get charges of uh, 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19th. He could get charges of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19th. And he got as small as 1 times 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. And he said, no matter what he did, he never got any charges in between this. He never got any charges between this. He never got any charges between this. And that was the smallest one. He determined and figured out the charge on one electron and also determined that charges are quantized. You couldn't have a half electron. They came in lump sums of that electron. We talked about it. He's the guy that came up with that. Okay? Now, this is the Millikan oil drop to do this. Let's go back to red. In this question here, we're asked, what is the voltage? Okay? So, we'll rearrange it for the voltage between the plates. And that voltage is going to be equal to M g the separation of the plates all over the charge and the mass two point three times ten to the negative fourteenth times nine point eight times how far apart the plates are which is zero point zero one five meters all over three electron charges so three times one point six times ten to the negative nineteenth now these electron charges are negative and when you plug all those numbers into your formula you'll get that the, the change in voltage is equal to negative 7,044 volts. Okay. So... What plate has to be charged to what? We don't know. We know the difference between them. So this could be, this. watch this, let's just understand plate voltages. This could be negative 3522, and this could be positive 3522. And the difference between that would be 70,044. It could also be that this could be charged 0, and the upper one could be positive, 7,044. Just as long as the difference between the plates is 7,044. The negative is there because we need, but the negative, we already know which direction the electron is going to go. That it's negatively charged. And B here, question B under 13, we'll leave it at that point. Uh, it says, what is the formula? I've already got the formula boxed off up here. Okay, thank you so much, physics fans. I hope you enjoyed electrostatics. Subscribe. Click the like button four times. And leave comments. Lots of comments. No one leaves comments. Thank you.